We came to the Hot Rod and Racing Expo to see some cool things and cool cars, but our favorite part of the show was running into an old friend. For the first time since the accident in October of 2021, Omas SS has seen the light of day, and it's pretty awesome. Well, I'm, I'm excited because you know it's, it's really the first time I've seen the light of day since, since the accident. What went into the decision to bring it here? Well, they're looking for some more cars to bring into the show, and we thought, what better thing than the show to progress? Since people have been following all along on the on the Omas resurrection, so thought we'd give it a try, bring it here. The last time we saw the car, the body was being reunited with the chassis. It has come a long way since then. Put a new frame under it, put the, you know, the LS3 powertrain in it, had to modify the tunnel to put the six-speed transmission in there. So yes, it's, it's had a lot of work done to it. That six-speed transmission, that's going to be slick because it, it's, it's going to be fun to shift too. Right? Oh yeah, it's absolutely. It's got that manual shift in there. It's kind of like a paddle shifter. So yeah, you got the luxury of both ways. Just put it in D and drive or put it over there and you get the shift when you're ready. That's a little different than just going through the old Prindle like it used to do. That's right, those days are gone, yeah. <laughs> Being able to show your work in, in progress, uh, some shops might be reluctant to do that. Is it, does that take some confidence to bring a car out while it's still under the, the microscope, so to speak? It does, because every, you know, and there are a few things that we did on here that, um, that are temporary that we wanted to do just to get it to the show. We didn't want to put all that time in the permanent setup on it, so you might get a couple critics and say, I wouldn't have done that or done this, but at the end of the day, it, it'll be dialed in nicely. But I think it's a great demonstration of where it's at. They can see what's really happened here. They can see that there's no, no nothing being hidden, right? You look at those quarter panels, there's no big Bondo you know, patches being in there. It's all solid, so. So what it can look like is what's behind it over here. It's gonna look like that one, absolutely. might do something magical at the end of the show. Maybe we're gonna fire it up for the first time. As long as Jerry didn't screw anything up, yeah. it should do it, just no problem. <laughs> so. If it doesn't start, it's Jerry's fault? It's Jerry's fault, and you can definitely quiz him in a little bit here about that, make sure he's got everything right on it. So, it should be good. Jeff was saying that if all goes well, the car's gonna start. Oh, it'll start. You're confident of that? Oh, I'll put a $100 bet on that. <laughs> he wasn't so confident, he was worried. Oh, I'm confident. Okay. I trust my work. All right, so when we go to turn the key later on today, we, we should hear some noise. Oh, yeah, if you don't, I'll throw a $100 bill on, on the dash. All right, that's a, it's a deal. All right. <laughs> I don't want to make 100 bucks. I want to hear the thing run. I want this 100 bucks. I hear when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of what you can't see took place underneath the car. The stainless steel exhaust put up a fight at every twist and turn, and some interesting combinations of four-letter words helped the project reach the finish line. The hardest part we found was the exhaust system with this X-frame. There's a whole lot of curves, a lot of pie cuts done to it. To get to work is all in-house made by our good guy Josh. But it's a lot of hard work, but it looks beautiful under there. It does. I've taken a peek under it. We got some awesome shots of it. Yeah, I see uh, it laying on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We had to get a look at it. Go, go enjoy the artwork because uh -huh. I love seeing a, a beautiful exhaust like that. Uh, I heard Josh had some issues though uh, along the way. It wasn't easy. No, there's a lot of tight fits in there. Trying to get the exhaust to come from inside the frame, outside the frame. Then where the back tires are at, there's not a lot of room for exhaust. We've got a lot of tire under there and very little room for that two and a half inch exhaust pipe to come through there because it goes all the way to the bumper and dumps. 
tucked up nice, hidden, but it wasn't easy. Yeah. I heard some of the language that accompanied the build was less than PG. Yeah, we can't speak it right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is family rated. We can't say anything right now. <laughs> did Josh come up with some interesting combinations of words? As oh, he was, yeah. He's, he he's half my age. He showed me some words I never heard of before. Really? Oh, yes. Okay. So yes. New language is being taught at Motor City yeah, Solutions. I go Google stuff. He was talking. <laughs> <laughs> they tell me this thing is going to start. If it doesn't, I win 100 bucks. Either way, I figure it's a win-win. Yeah, this is the first time I've been able to sit in this seat in nearly two years and it's brought back memories of when I used to sit behind the wheel in my grandmother's garage pretending to drive the car. The full emotion of getting the build to this point hasn't hit me yet, but it's coming and so is my grandma's car.